my third video on formulation of linear programming problem and here we want to construct such mathematical model which involve linear decision variables and there are some constraint and non-negative restriction and for doing this we need to identify a decision variable in the problem we need to write down in terms of inequality uh, or whatever be the given condition in the problem and we need to identify objective functions and press them in terms of decision variables and we need to identify objective function and write them in terms of decision variable and including the non-negative restriction so let's consider an example now here in this problem a ship has three cargo hold forward aft and center and the capacity limits are given here in the forward we can have this much tons of the amount that can be stored in the center it has this much capacity in the aft this has this much capacity or in terms of volume it is written here the following cargoes are offered the ship owner may accept all or any part of each commodity so we have now three types of the commodity that is to be stored in forward center enough a b c and this correspond to the amount 6000 4000 2000 and the volume per turn required is 60 50 25 and the profit per turn earned is 60 80 50 in rupees in order to preserve the trim of the ship that means there is no wastage in terms of the storage here the weight in each hold must be proportional to the capacity in turns the objective is to maximize the profit while storing and formulate this as a linear programming model for solution of this given problem let's first consider the decision variable or identify what can be the decision variable so here is the amount of the commodities or we may say commodity a b c and this commodity a has to be stored in forward center or aft so a can go to forward a can go to center and a can also go to aft also okay similarly b can also go to forward center and aft and similarly c commodity can also go to these locations forward center and aft so that means now i'm going to take up one decision variable that depicts the commodity and the second decision variable that depicts these locations so let x1 a x2 a x3 a be the weight of commodity a that can be accommodated in forward center and aft respectively and similarly we can take x1 b x2 b x3 b be the weight of commodity b that can be accommodated in forward center and aft and third third decision variable where we have again three parts x1 c x2 c x3 c be the commodity c that can be accommodated in these three locations now objective function is little obvious you can see here the profit per turn is given or according to the weight the profit for commodity a is rupees 60 and commodity a is stored in these three places so let's add the total weight x1 a x2 a plus x3 multiply by 60 similarly commodity b is also placed in these three locations add the total commodity and multiply it by its profit and do the, this one for the third case also for the commodity c repeat the process so that becomes the objective function so this what and that becomes the objective function which we want to maximize now let us look at the constraint in the constraint we say that the commodity a can go at three places forward center and aft and the total amount of the commodity a is 6000 so this amount is actually about the weight this is in terms of tons profit is here okay so this is the total amount of the commodities a in total has 6000 this is the availability and a is going in these three locations so let us add it as a x1 a plus x2 a plus x3 a so in forward in center in off that is the total commodity and this should not exceed 6000 because this is the total amount that is given to us here in the uh, question so this become the first commodity constraint so i can write here these are the commodity constraints the commodities are coming a b and c all are coming so let's look at now the data this is the capacity of the forward center aft and we can see that x1 a x1 b x1 c similarly this is the second that is due to the center while taking the decision variable 2a plus 2b plus 2c is less than or equal to 3000 and we got the third constraint so this is the weight capacity that we can say at the forward center and aft 
Now also we need to compare the volume. So the volumes are given here and volume per ton is given here. So this is the volume per ton 60. So I'm going to multiply this 61A plus the second volume 51B plus the third volume corresponding to the commodity C that is 25X1C and this volume when they are going in the forward. So this should not exceed this amount. This should not exceed the given amount. So hence we got this first constraint. Similarly, I got now again the second constraint by comparing now from the volume and by comparing the third quantity given in the volume. So that is here. So this is 30,000 and all decision variable are again non-negative. Either we store something or we do not store. So the decision variable are not negative. They are non-negative decision variables. So we get this as the linear formulation, linear programming problem, or we may say this as a formulation of the above given problem. The problem that I'm now considering is a scheduling problem. And in such problem that arise in various situations where the cost or the profit is involved as per schedule. And to understand this, let's take a very simple scheduling problem, which is I've written here a bus operating in a particular city for 24 by 7. Now, as we know that there are some P cars at the bus train and some non P cars. So we can just see that uh, the buses are operating for 24 by 7. There are some P cars between 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then there are some non P cars. Let's say these are the uh, midnight schedule and this is very early morning schedule so these are the non p cars and then we want to know how to plan the schedule and how to operate the buses how many number of buses are to be operated so that this whole schedule is followed up and to see this in this problem it's a schedule of 24 hours so the schedule for 24 hours has the following minimum requirement of the buses and they have been given six period these are the times the new buses can start plying at particular period given below. So that means whenever a new bus join that can start at the ith period or at the second period. There are total six period and then after this last period you can see that this is 12 midnight and again back from 12 to 4 pm 4 to 8 and so on. So it continues the process. So this is 24 by 7 bus schedule and for each uh, particular schedule the total num minimum number of buses uh, requirement is also given. The question says to carry out the required operation for the bus scheduling, each bus should operate 8 hours successively in a day and formulate the problem as a linear programming problem so that to minimize the total number of the buses requirement. So let us first identify the decision variable here. What is the decision variable identification? This is now because at any period bus can start, a new bus can join at any of the period. So let us say so let x1, x2 up till x6 be the number of buses joined or started plying at ith period. And we have been given 6 period. So let us write i varying from 1 to 6. The question says because we want to minimize the total number of buses requirement. There is no cost associated with the bus or the running cost. So we simply want to minimize the total number of the buses. So that becomes the objective function. Let us first form the objective function x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus on plus x6. That become the objective function. The condition is that if a bus started at the first period, if the bus is at the first period, let us say x1 number of buses have started plying at the first period, they will have to ply for eight hours successfully. This is the condition. This means they will start finishing their job at the second period. So that means at the second period, we have x1 number of buses plus there are few more buses x2 which will join their services at the second period. So this means at the second period, total number of buses are x1 plus x2 and they should satisfy this requirement so that will give me my first constraint that x1 plus x2 should be greater than or equal to 8 because it is minimum number of requirement in the similar way if i look at now at the third period the x2 buses which were started their service at the second period they will continue because of the 8 hour services they have to provide and then there are some new buses that will start their service at the third period so third period now have the total number of buses x2 x3 and this number should be greater than or equal to 10. So this means x2 plus x3 is greater than or equal to 10. And similarly x4 will start services here. That means at fourth period we have x4 the new buses and the previous buses. They should be greater than or equal to 7 and we continue like this. So x5 will start here and x6 will start here. At x5 we got x5 plus the previous buses x6 plus the previous buses so this satisfies the 8 hour condition the x6 will start the service here 
they will finish their service at the next period which is actually now this because it is 24 bars so the first constraint now this with the new buses x1 and the, the one that are now carrying out from the previous period in this case previous period which is due to the rotation that is x6 and hence that will be satisfied by 4 so now if i write all these into constraint this is x3 plus x4 is greater than or equal to 7 x4 plus x5 this is greater than or equal to 12 x5 plus x6 is greater than or equal to 4 and x6 plus x1 this is greater than or equal to 4 this is due to this 4 and any bus can join at this period or it may not join so the minimum re requirement on these decision variable are that they are non-negative so they are greater than or equal to zero so this is the linear programming pro formulation for this particular problem and here we got objective function these all are the constraints including the one which is written on the left hand side and these are the non-negative restrictions we can look at one more scheduling problem so here it is a super bazaar in a city daily needs between 32 and 40 workers depending upon the time of the day the rush hours are between noon and 2 pm and the table indicates the number of workers needed at various hours when the bazaar is open so here is the number of workers that is required and similarly as we did in the last problem there are time periods mentioned but now the condition is not so simple the work although there are period mentioned here but if we look at in the next paragraph there are some condition while scheduling the jobs so we can now read super bazaar now employs 34 full-time workers but needs a few part-time workers also a part-time worker must put in exactly four hours a day but can start anytime between 9 a.m and 1 p.m this means the last period somebody will not join in the last period okay it has mentioned that it can join between 9 to 1 p.m full-time workers work from 9 a.m to 5 p.m but are allowed an hour for lunch half of the full-time workers eat at 12 noon and other at 1 p.m the management of the super bazaar limit part-time hours to a maximum of 50 percent of the day's total requirement so that's also another condition that part-time worker cannot be beyond than 50 percent so that is the maximum part-time earns rupees 48 per day on average while full-time earn rupees 140 per day in the salary and benefits on the average the management want to set a schedule that would minimize the total daily manpower cost and this is what we want to formulate as linear programming problem so we can see now in this problem there are two type of the worker that we are coming in the situation one is the full-time worker and another is the part-time worker so let us take now the formulation so now first i have given here the decision variable let y represent the number of full-time workers and let xj represent the part-time workers starting at 9 am 11 am and 1 pm as mentioned in the problem so j because i have considered xj represent the part-time workers so j is at the first uh, uh, first time schedule which will join and when j is equal to 2 so x2 is a part-time worker which will join the services at 11 am and so on at the third stage the objective function was to minimize the total manpower cost we have mentioned that 140 rupees per day is the cost which is for the full-time worker and 48 is for the other cases subject to the constraint this is the requirement 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. This is the requirement 11 to 1 p.m. Because of the lunch hour, we can see there are the lunch hour and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. need. And 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. need, we can have y plus x3 greater than or equal to 33. Total full time available is 34 as mentioned in the problem. And the last constraint, part time hours cannot exceed 50% of the total hours required each day, which is the sum of the workers needed each hour. So, this is the 50% sum of which we require at each hour. We can see that. And this will be 4 times x1 plus x2 plus x3 because the worker invests 4 hours of the per day working when they are doing the part time job. And hence, all the decision variable are greater than or equal to 0. That ensure that we have a non negative restrictions so from this example we can see that there are many uh, scheduling problem that may arrive whether it is machine scheduling or it is a manpower scheduling or it is any other situation where we need to schedule something for example bus or for example duties in the hospitals or any other area where we need to schedule something with certain conditions and here we call these conditions as the constraint so we see these scheduling problem first rise to the linear programming problem